Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Are you all set, Your Honor? Yeah, we're ready. I didn't know if you guys were done. We should change. Yeah, I'm ready for it. All right. Yeah. Dixon, come on over. I'm going to be right here. Sit on the black line right there, bro. It's your poor man. Gerard Dixon. All right, Mr. Dixon, how you doing today? So, so. I mean, court. I think. So, do you have the right to talk to an attorney before you're arraigned? Did you have a chance to try to speak with them? I believe so, yes. I believe the last okay. guy was in front of me. Or an investigator. Okay. One of the two. Okay, would have been probably an attorney. All right. All right, you've got three cases in front of me. I'm going to tell you what you're charged with. I'm going to advise you of your rights. Okay. Um, you have the right to remain silent. All right. You are being recorded. Anything you say could be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney represent you, but you do not have to. That is a right that you can waive. Um, you have the right to know what you're charged with and the minimum sentence, which I'm getting ready to tell you. Um, you have the right to ask the government, or the court, to call witnesses to speak for you at trial. You have right to hear and question all witnesses against you at trial. You have the right to be presumed innocent until you are proven guilty or unless you are proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, right? And you do have the right to speak at your trial if you would speak if you wish to do so. And if you do not wish to do so, you have the right not to have that option, uh, choosing the option not to speak held against you. So you have three cases in front of me. In your first case, you are charged with aggravated stalking and domestic violence. This is alleged to have occurred back in July of 2023. Aggravated stalking is a felony for which the maximum possible penalty is up to five years in prison. Domestic violence is a misdemeanor for which the maximum possible penalty is up to 93 days in jail and or a $500 fine. In your second file, with an alleged offense in May of 2024, you are also charged with aggravated stalking. Looks like both of these have to do with interactions with your mom. Um, in count one, there's only one count in this file. And that is a five-year felony with a five-year maximum penalty. Okay. In your final case, okay, Mr. Dixon, listen, this please. Means I have to disbar. You're trying to cook. No one is stalking her. You didn't give me my 30 days to get off get out of her house. Do you want to okay. get this bar? I Mr. Work Dixon, the bar. Mr. Dixon, Mr. Dixon, remember what I told you. You have a right to remain silent. No one is presuming you guilty at this point. That's okay, right. it's just that's right. I, I Quiet, Mr. Right Dixon. Mr. Dixon. I have the right to remain Mr. silent. Mr. Dixon. I did not decide to be okay, silent. You're going to be to muted. You're going to be muted. You may speak when I'm done. I will get, I promise to give you a turn to speak if you let me finish. Let me finish, okay? I need to tell you what your charges are. It's my responsibility to do that. I'm legally required to do that. So I'm just telling you what they are. I'm not saying you're guilty. I have to tell you what they are. So your final case before me is a charge as a PPO violation. All right. So on your PPO violation case, all right, this one, because it's a PPO violation, you're going to have court tomorrow morning. You'll be in front of the judge on that case first thing in the morning at 9 a.m. This one's a remand because you have court first thing tomorrow morning. In your other two cases, you're going to have court again on Tuesday. You're going to be seeing a judge on Tuesday. And who ordered a speedy? This is speedy. Who ordered a speedy? Did you order a speedy? Why are you speaking for me? 
No one speaks you before you don't speak. have a chance to speak, Mr. Dixon. One moment, you're still going to have a chance to speak. In each of these cases, bond is going to be set at twenty five thousand dollars cash, with a no contact yeah, provision with mom no and no contact with your mother. Please don't make me mute you. I'd like to give you your opportunity to speak if you want to do like so. But you have to wait till I'm done. Twenty five thousand dollars cash. You may not have any contact with your mom or the address where she is located. All right, now, and that's why you're not letting me get my things. You're, you're evicting me illegally, and you're not letting me get my things. All she right. got put down with the correspondence work. Would this you like to have, Give me would you like to have Mr. Give me, Dixon? Do you want me to get your things? Do you want me to have an officer help you go get your things from the house? Yes, I do. That's what she was supposed all to do. Right. That's all I want you to do is help me get my things. Shannon Walker, the judge who reinforced this, never allowed me to get my things. Now, if you want to be thrown in prison Mr. for remanding re and reinforcing something that's illegal, I will throw your black ass Mr. in Mr. Mr. Dixon, prison. Mr. Dixon. June 4th for bond review hearing, 9 a.m. June 10th for probable cause conference, 8.30 a.m. June 17th for preliminary examination at 8.45 a.m. DDC See you on the female side. Okay. With you on the female side, DDC. <laughs> Hi, what's your name, please? Davis. All right, Ms. Davis. All right, Ms. Davis has two files in front of me. Can we call them together? Yes, please, Your Honor. All right, People versus Deja Davis, counsel. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kashawa Kirkland, on behalf of Ms. Davis, who has been advised of her rights, wishes to stand mute and waive the formal reading. Thank you. Um, court notes formal reading has been waived, which with respect to both files. Um, interest and not guilty plea on your client's behalf with respect to both files. I'm noting in one file, the incident date is from September of 2022. In the other file, the incident date is from November of 2023. Counselor, are you aware of any other ongoing issues between the parties at this point? None that I know of, Your Honor, and actually there is in a relationship. So I, I would ask for a non assaultive contact. These are some older cases. It sounds like they've resolved whatever issues may have been present at this time. Bond is set in each case at $100,000 personal, no assaultive contact with the complainant. So doesn't mean you can't see each other, but if something comes to the court's attention again, because you guys are fighting, things are going to get worse. So, you know, you're give, being given the benefit of being allowed to still see him but no assaultive contact, no fighting. And that's just because I'm told you guys are already in contact again and these cases are older. All right. Um, next court date, June 10th for probable cause conference in both files. June 17th for preliminary examination in both files. Both thank in front of Judge King. Yep, all in front of Judge King. Thank you. DDC, thank you. Good night. Oh, no. Uh, just, you know, one more day. Ms. Field. Yep, Ms. Fields. Sorry about that. <laughs> How are you doing, Your Honor? My name is Alicia Marie Fields. All right. Good afternoon, Ms. Fields. People versus Alicia Fields, counsel. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kashava Kirkland on behalf of Ms. Fields, who has been advised of her right, which is to stand mute and the formal reading. Thank you, counsel. The court notes formal reading has been waived. Uh, interest in that guilty plea on your client's behalf. Position is to bond. So, Judge, I am asking for a high personal in this case. So, uh, a couple couple things. I mean, by the complainant's own admission, um, this was a, a, a verbal argument that he escalated into physical. Uh, Ms. Fields does still assert her, yeah. her right to silence. He at one point said that she was the one who shot him. Then she said he wasn't the one who shot him. Um, she is a lifelong resident with five children, so she's not a risk of flight. I'd also argue she's not a danger to the community. She has no priors, not currently on probation or parole, no pending cases. 
um, does fall within the 200% guidelines. And at this point, there's no amount of bond that she can afford to pay. I did want to let the court know that she did turn herself in today. Or on All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I mean, according to the investigators reports, complainant admits that he was the first one to get physical slapping the defendant um, before it then escalated some more. I don't have any priors in front of me for anything like this. And quite frankly, the complainant appears quite uncooperative. So the case probably, you know, I don't know where it's going to go, but he doesn't seem to be very co cooperative. Um, so I'm not going to keep her locked up if that's the case. Bond is set at $100,000 personal. Ma'am, you're not to purchase or possess any firearms or other dangerous weapons in the course of your bond. Okay, thank you. Um, given that this is so recent, however, May 13th, counsel, there is going to be a strict no contact order until a judge says otherwise. You are not to have any contact with the complainant at this time, no verbal contact, no written contact, no contact with third parties or social media. Any attempt at contact will be considered a violation of the conditions of your bond. You can ask the, if, hold on, you can ask the court about that at your next court date on June 10th. If that's eight days from now, you have court. And if the two of you have been living together and, you know, you don't feel like you need to be kept away and he doesn't feel like you need to be kept away, he can communicate that. You can ask them to lift that. Um, you had she had her yeah, hand raised. I assume it's about bond conditions or getting things from house or going to check in with her counsel. Yes, Miss Field, were you? I don't want you to say anything for the record because this is recorded. Were you going to ask to get some of your belongings from the house? Um. Yes, I can go to the house. I was wondering about my kids because he does have my kids. Or should I just wait to to the next court date to see my kids to ask to see my kids? And he's not yeah, even that I mean, given what I'm reading in, in the investigator's report, the answer to that is yes for now. Okay. So, but again, you've got a hearing in eight days. You can ask the judge about um, loosening these requirements when you're in front of the judge. Probable cause conference, June 10th, uh, 8.30 a.m. Preliminary examination, June 17th, 8.45 a.m. $100,000 personal, no weapons, no contact. Uh, and your court dates are going to be in front of Judge King. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, Judge John. Good night, Connor.